Did open banking in the US ever really need the CFPB to succeed? If we were shooting this video a year ago, I'd be deep in the weeds of the personal financial data rights rule and section 1033 of Dodd-Frank. It sounds riveting, I know. What open banking really means is much more compelling. Your financial data is yours to use as you please, and that opens up genuinely exciting possibilities for everyone. There have always been two parallel open banking stories. One focused on technological innovation and implementation, the other centered on regulatory frameworks and standards. So what exactly do we mean when we say open banking? It's the ability to take information from your checking account, credit card, or any financial service, and using standardized APIs, do things like connect it to fintech apps that help you reach financial goals, and integrate your financial data across multiple platforms. The API part is critically important. It eliminates the need for screen scraping. That's when apps have to log into your bank account using your username and password to read your account information, which creates obvious security risks. In general, banks aren't enthusiastic about new regulations, but open banking standards are different. They represent a technical modernization that forward-thinking institutions recognize as essential for growing and retaining their customer base, especially as customers increasingly expect seamless digital experiences. The CFPB, which issued the final rule and would have enforced it, has been significantly weakened due to recent government developments. The modernization story now has substantially more momentum than the regulatory one. Just look at the timeline. Dodd-Frank was passed 14 years ago, and even the final rule established a compliance schedule extending years into the future. A consortium of industry participants was already working ahead of the regulators to make open banking a reality. Let's return to why APIs matter so much. For me to transfer my financial data between institutions, they need APIs that can effectively communicate with each other. This requires standardization, a common language for these open banking interfaces. And as a technologist, I can tell you, we love agreed upon standards. Market participants, especially data aggregators like Plaid, recognize the urgent need for API standardization and consumer data sharing. Their solution? Forming an organization called the Financial Data Exchange, or FDX. One significant contribution from the CFPB was officially designating FDX as a standard setting body. This was a tacit admission that regulators lacked the technical expertise to define the APIs themselves, essentially delegating the technical core of the rule to industry experts. So why does Stronghold care about this development? The more seamlessly we can navigate traditional finance, the more opportunities we create for decentralized finance integration. When my blockchain wallet can communicate directly with my bank account through standardized APIs, the distinction between these systems begins to fade. Some argue banks won't voluntarily embrace these standards because they make switching financial providers easier. In the modern financial ecosystem, being well-connected is the strongest competitive advantage. Increasing access to personal financial data will indeed intensify competition and drive innovation, but that's precisely what makes an institution valuable in the interconnected future. The open banking transformation is already accelerating with or without regulatory mandates. Compliance requirements have evolved into something much larger, the foundation for interconnected financial infrastructure that will define the next decade of innovation. And the technical bridges being built today are laying the foundation for truly revolutionary financial access tomorrow. Want to stay ahead of these transformative shifts in financial infrastructure? Subscribe to our channel for insights on the evolving digital asset landscape. If you have questions about how open banking might impact your financial experience or how it connects to blockchain technologies, drop them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.